So for our final laboratory report in this case, what we have is uh, a collection of some set of different labs that we've done as opposed to all the previous ones in which they're just pretty much yes or no. Here, what we want to do is make sure we have the correct preparation for this. And so we definitely want you guys to have all the YouTube videos reviewed. Make sure you've read all the documentation that you have in the um, on Canvas. Uh, specifically for the ELISA, we have a handout. We have a couple of videos ready for you guys for you to prepare those, right? For 42 and 43, which are the disinfectants, antiseptics, and antibiotics, those have a separate set of instructions as well. And keeping in mind that most of this information is dependent on the pre-lab. So without a pre-lab, obviously you don't get any credit for these guys. And then the other heavy hitter of this story is the fact that you need to have your discussion, right? And so if you do not have a discussion, basically you don't get a grade for this particular report either. So what does that include? What does that consist of? So that means you're gonna be doing a little bit of an analysis, a little bit of a conclusion, and then talk to us about what did you learn from that particular um, lab? So let's kind of go through this to kind of break it down a little bit more for by lab. So for lab 40, specifically for the ELISA test, remember that it's been uh, modified just a little bit to reflect more on the uh, current issue as opposed to the West Nile virus. And so your job is to focus on the data itself and use a little bit of the story to kind of analyze what is there. So for that, obviously we do have a YouTube video on how the ELISA test actually works, one demonstrating it, what do you include, what do you add, what's the timing, all that good stuff. And then the handout itself has the story behind it. And then after that, you will use the images just like any compendium that we've had before. So you can actually analyze those and then figure out what does it mean? That is what usually goes into both the lab manual and the lab notebook. However, as you all know, at the end of most labs, there's that little set of lines that tell you conclusion and discussion. And that's really where the, uh, the meat of this lab actually goes into. That's what's really worth a lot of the points as opposed to just collecting the data. And so for that, that is the discussion, right? And so here you're going to try and tell us what do those results actually mean? What are you actually learning from that aside from just saying yes or no, it's blue or red or anything like that? And that will be also entered into your lab manual and lab notebook. For 42 and 43, the uh, antiseptics, disinfectants, and antibiotics, uh, the Kirby Bauer method that we're learning in the lecture kind of thing, here, you're actually going to use the data that is part of that compendium. There's definitely a YouTube uh, video for that as well. Combine it with the handout one more time. But here, you get the measure. So normally, when we're in the lab, we'll actually take those plates, use a ruler, take everything out. Since we can't do this right now in person, then we've provided you with a ruler and virtually all the images that are on that handout on that compendium. right? And so you're gonna be able to measure those by diameters. And then you're gonna to have to establish what do you conclude from that? Now, keep in mind to understand what the sizes, those 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters, whatever you might be getting, right? There is a table on the lab supplement that you're gonna to have to use to figure that out. That's the only place that you can find that. So you're actually going to have to go into the supplement to get that information, all right? So then once you're done measuring and once you figure out what the sensitivity scale is, then again, you're gonna put all that data into your lab manual lab notebook, just like you would normally, right? And then you're going to pretty much now discuss the meaning of what those uh, specific measurements are. And then keep in mind that you're also doing the in-person one, the one that we sent you with the lab kit, the one we're gonna do in a moment, right? You're gonna also do a similar or reproduction of what you would be doing with lab 42. You're going to perform your own mini version of that. And then you're going to collect the data and then input that collectively in a um, discussion board on Canvas as well. So what are we meaning when we're trying to tell you, hey, you know, what's a conclusion? What's a discussion? So there are actually some small differences in science to what those things mean. If you've ever kind of read, for example, a, a journal, there usually is a little bit of your methods, your data, it, and then you get at the end a conclusion and a discussion, each one of them kind of summarizing a little bit different things. So when we're talking about a conclusion, 
This is where you're actually putting together all the data that you collected, typically that raw data, and you're doing some sort of analysis, meaning that you're putting together all that information into some sort of pretty picture, diagram, chart, table, so that the people that are gonna be reading this information are learning the overall idea of what happened, rather than trying to bore them to death with every single point by point by point of information that you collected, you provide them with that data, they don't have to read it, they can obviously, but then they will actually take that raw data and uh, sorry, the chart from that raw data and figure out what that meant, right? So you still include your raw data into your manual, into your lab notebook. So you still report it, you still enter it, right? You still enter those data points, but you will convert that set of information into something that is more aesthetically pleasing, something that your uh, audience can go, oh, that's what they're figuring out from that. So that typically turns into, like I said, some sort of chart, some sort of uh, diagram, some sort of, you know, little high picture, something like that, that they go, okay, that's what they're trying to tell me. Now, the discussion, on the other hand, a little bit different. Here, now you're going to use your brain to figure out to give some sort of meaning behind everything that you've collected in the conclusion. In other words, you're trying to explain what's the big deal. What happened? What did you learn from this? What is important from all of this? What is the main idea? What are we figuring out from that conclusion itself? So here, you're literally kind of writing out the importance, kind of the take home message of what you're uh, collecting from that particular experiment. That's what happens. Now, typically this is relatively short, right? Uh, your discussion is usually maybe one or two lines. If it's a very large set of conclusions, then maybe it's a little bit longer, but normally the discussion is fairly short, just a couple of lines saying, hey, this is the magic, this is what we learned, this is what was really cool about this particular thing. To kind of break this down visually if you want to. So everybody will be inputting over here on the left-hand side, all the measurements that you're collecting. These have no particular rhyme or reason, I'm just kind of showing to you. So you're inputting your values, um, you're gonna be uh, tabulating them typically, most of the time. Uh, most of the time you'll end up doing some sort of little statistical analysis behind it, you know, maybe some averages, some standard deviations, uh, who knows you know, what your instructors may require you to do. And then you're gonna conclude something from it. And that's what you're kind of seeing over here in the middle, right? Now you're gonna actually give it some sort of visual representation to kind of, again, explain what you just finished analyzing. So for this example, I just took the averages that I had collected from whatever data I had available. Notice that even some of them did not have enough points. So I really didn't have an average. And so then I reported it as this little pretty histogram, right? Saying, okay, well, for the, Scenario number one, this is the value that I got. Scenario number two, scenario number three, that's what we saw. And so now your audience or whoever reading your data can actually see, oh, look, uh, scenario three is bigger than you know two and one or something like that. That's what you're trying to show them. Rather than them having to go and review everything that is over here on the left-hand side, you just give them kind of a summary of everything that happened. And now for the discussion point, again, then your job is to kind of talk about it to say, hey, look, based on what you're seeing on that pretty little chart, here's what it means. This guy is better than this one, or this one didn't work as well as that one. And so that means that this particular scenario is better or worse, or this treatment is stronger, this uh, situation takes less, whatever. That's kind of what you're drawing from that. And again, just a couple of lines behind that, right? So again, we're taking all the material that you're uh, collecting, and that can be you know, 10 points, 30 points, 100 points, and typically real life, it can be anywhere between 100, 100,000 points sometimes. If you're into data analysis, it can get kind of crazy, right? And so you tabulate it so you can show all the data that you collected, and then your job is then to analyze it, to get some sort of statistic out of it. Like I said, typically we're doing silly little things like averages and um, standard deviations and things like that. And so then you, you're the person that analyzes that, that puts all that information together. And on that point in time, then you can run your conclusion. You're actually summarizing all the material that you collected to tell us what happened. And then at that point in time, you can say, hey, look, this one does this, this one does that, or whatever uh, situation you're in there. And then after you've reported that, then again, what does that actually mean? What are you taking out of that, right? Uh, are you learning something? Did you uh, get anything of value? Can you tell your audience, look, this is important that you pay attention to this particular test or uh, data or situation? 
that's what you're going for, right? And so in our case over here, we have, um, I put three situations just kind of in there, A, B, or C, and more or less kind of, I'm gonna say, look, I'm learning that A does this particular thing where a C does not or does, that's what we're trying to do across all of these, all right? So that's what we're gonna be setting up for your lab report number five. And so as always, those typically are due on Fridays by midnight, right? So you should have enough time to analyze those and get those in there. Now, kind of shifting up to the experiment that we're going to be doing uh, in-house. So this is where I ask you to have all your materials ready before we get ourselves started, right? So you're gonna be collecting all your bowls, your paper towels or towels, all your cleansers, and in particular, our test substance, which is gonna be our pepper and any of the other cleansers that I ask you to collect, right? Uh, reminding you that again, you need about a two by three area for you to work with, right? And then you're gonna wanna have some sort of towel, not only under so that you don't make a mess, but also so you can pick up any spills that you're gonna have, right? And you're gonna try and fill these up almost to the top, just so you can have enough measurement for your hands, right? And then um, we'll demonstrate it really quick. I'll show you what we wanna do. And then you're gonna arrange it yourself, right? And then after that, you're gonna to wanna to record it. So I'll give you enough time to kind of step away so you can do your setup, your recording, and then everybody will come back and then provide me with their conclusions that you're having from that, right? So more or less, you should have at least three different scenarios to test, right? One of them will be your control system. So since we're kind of in this little uh, Western side of the world, we typically count from left to right. So I'm gonna assume that you're gonna put your uh, control bowl on the left-hand side. That's the one that is not gonna be treated with anything. And you're gonna be taking your dominant hand, whichever one that is, and you're gonna be using your index finger or whatever, it doesn't matter, uh, one of your fingers to kind of place your finger within that solution. And then again, you're not doing anything to that particular bowl, it's just the water and the particular uh, pepper that we're using to do that. And then just kind of record that, show what happened. Then you're gonna have our second, third, fourth, whatever bowls you decided to actually set up, at least a minimum of a couple of those to play with. And you're going to take the same hand, same finger and everything else. And then you're going to run it through your first set of cleansers. So you're going to basically uh, coat your uh, the same finger or the same hand with that particular new cleanser, whether that was hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, soap, detergent, lotion, whatever those might have been. And you're going to repeat the process. You're going to place that in the second bowl that you have. And again, record and observe what happens. And then you're going to do it again. Rinse and repeat, basically clean that hand off, coat it with a new solution or new target one, and then place it in the third bowl. And then a fourth and a fifth, and as many as you have or you decided to test, right? And that's it. Once you have it recorded on your own, what you're going to be doing is reporting it in two versions behind this. One of them will be through social media, right? We have our DXM channel, so you can throw that in Instagram. The reason why we don't do this through Canvas is because it will bog down the system. And the reason why we don't do it through email is because then we won't be able to kind of transmit fairly large videos at times. Now, most people's videos on them end up being like a minute or two. They don't end up being very long. But if we end up collecting two, 300 of these, you can understand it gets pretty, pretty crazy. So make sure you do that, right? And then uh, for your uh, discussion in this case for us, we'll bring it, we'll talk about it, we'll share it after it's been recorded to show what did we learn from that. That is pretty much our system for today. So we have the breakdown for the ELISA. We have the uh, results for 42 and 43. And then we'll set up 41 for the next 5, 10 minutes. And then we'll share those results as well. That's pretty much the plan for today.